Welcome to FreshMaya.com. My name is Eric, and I'm going to show you the basics of using bump maps inside of Maya. Now, I want to move kind of quickly so I can get as much into this uh, tutorial as I can. All right, on my desktop, I've got a pattern that I created in Microsoft Paint, just a black and white pattern. Everywhere it's white is going to be considered a bump inside of Maya, and everywhere it's black is going to have no effect. If I had any gray on here, it would be in between uh, no effect and having full effect on the bump. All right, let's go back into Maya. I have a cylinder here. I just added a blend material, just a, a just a simple blend material. All right, I'm gonna go into the attribute editor for my material, my blend. I'm gonna go down to where it says bump mapping, and the far right you'll see a button with a checkerboard. I'm just gonna click on that. This dialog box opens up. Since I'm gonna use a file on my desktop, I'm gonna click on file. Over here, back in the attribute editor where it says bump value, the far right of that you'll see a button. I'm gonna click on that button. And now you'll see image name with a, another button with a picture of a folder on it. I'm going to click that button with that uh, folder on it, and it allows me to navigate on my computer, in my case, on my desktop, and there's my design file that I created, a little JPEG. All right, open. Let's do a test render. All right, there's our bump. Now I'm going to change this background to white. So I'm going to go to my View Panels menu bar, underneath View, Camera Attribute Editor, and I'm going to change the environment color from black to white. All right, let's do another test. Oops. Uh, so while we're in here, let's go ahead and make this a little bigger so you can see it better. So 800 by 600. And let's go ahead and make the quality to highest quality. All right, do another test render. All right, there we go, much better. All right, so it looks pretty bad right now. So let's first start with the UVs. I'm going to select my cylinder, go to Create UV Cylindrical Mapping, since this is a cylinder. All right, F8, go back to object mode, do another render. All right, now just adding a uh, UV mapping on this, our cylindrical projection, made it a lot better. Now I can tell right now that our bump is way too much just by the way it all looks. It just looks pretty sloppy right now. So what I'm going to do is underneath the attributes for our material, I'm going to go back down to where it says bump mapping. I'm going to click on the button to the far right again. Okay, now. We're at the image, so I'm going to go up here to the top where it says File. There's two buttons to the right of that. I'm going to click on this bottom button, and it takes us back to this part where you'll see Bump Depth. So I'm going to lower this down to, say, actually I'm going to lower it all the way down to 0.1, and I'll just work my way up. Let's just start doing a series of renders. Actually, that looks pretty good right there. I'll just keep it there for now. But I'm going to add more of this pattern, so an easy way to do that is... I just clicked on my object, and I've got all my tabs up here. I did that cylindrical projection, so I'm just going to click on that tab that says Polysil Projection 1. And down here under the image attributes, there's image scale. There's horizontal and there's vertical. All right, so horizontal, I'm going to stretch it. Let's see. Uh, I'll just double it. And let's do three uh, horizontal. Do another test render. All right, that looks really good. All right, so there we go. Um, if you look, you can see some highlights where the light's hitting it. So it give, it just adds to the uh, 3D effect of it. If you look to the left and right of our cylinder, it is definitely flat. It's the flowers aren't protruding out from our cylinder. It's flat. So it's just an easy way that you can create a lot of detail on objects without actually having to model the details. So let me kind of zoom in here a little more recheck our bump value and our bump value still looks really good okay now if we go to our let's go back I'm just gonna click on the blend tab in our attributes go back down to bump mapping click on the button to the far right go back up here to the file click on this bottom button right there and on this bump value I'm gonna change it from 0.1 to negative 0.1 And now you can see that it looks like our design is stamped into our cylinder rather than projecting out. So our bump is going into our cylinder because we have a negative value on our bump depth. And that's it for bump mapping. So pretty simple. So just play around with it and uh, use some uh, grayscale images to see what kind of effects you can get. Uh, the more you play around with it, the better you'll get with it. Okay, um, we've got time, so I'm going to give you a little uh, extra... 
something. Let me go, and I already know what I'm going to do. I was hoping I would have enough time for it. So let's see. I'm going to go into GIMP. Now, I'm just going to show you a little trick that I use, do, uh, for bump mapping when I create, like, a... Uh, Um, stucco walls and brick walls and stuff like painted brick walls so let's see I don't need that alright I'm gonna go to file new I'm just inside Gimp which is kinda like a Photoshop uh, width I'll just doesn't matter alright filters noise HSV noise I'm just gonna add some noise let's see value uh, saturation no let's make it black and white uh, Okay, just something simple. So file, save, go to a desktop, and I'll save this as noise.jpg, JPG. Save, highest quality, save. All right, X out. All right, back over our file. And you can you click the file tab, or you can go over here, and you can click these uh, buttons to uh, navigate through. So. Uh, back to where it says file, and again, if you don't want to get there, just click on your object, go to your blend material, go down to where it says bump, go to the far right, and click on the button. And right there is our image. I'm going to click on the button with a folder on it again, so we can select a new file. I'm going to select noise, open, and let's do a test render. And you can see that looks like stucco. I'm going to zoom in here. may have to adjust our bump depth yeah let's, let's adjust our bump depth a little bit let's go ahead and stop that let's try 0 0.075 do another render oh I should use a negative value so let's do negative point let's try negative 0.05 Alright, and there is our stucco. So all I did was created a noise pattern and applied it as a bump. And now our wall, or I guess look, in this case the column, it looks like uh, stucco. Alright, let's do one more render here. I hope this is big enough so that you can uh, see it. So there we go. It's a really easy way to uh, create a stucco looking wall. All right, now we can take this another step, and let's change this to a positive value, so 0.05. And I'm going to go ahead and go back to my noise pattern, and go back and edit. Well, I could just do this in paint. It uh, doesn't really matter, so let's go into paint. Just show you that uh, you can do a lot with just, you know, other programs. All right, so I'm just going to start making some lines. Let's kind of make a center block pattern here. Now I'm doing this with a mouse, so <laughs> don't laugh too much about my non-straight lines. All right, that's fine. Let's just kind of make a center block pattern here. Again, this might not be perfect, but it will give you. Uh, once you see this, it will give you an idea. It will give you the idea that I'm trying to convey because you can really do quite a bit with uh, bump maps. And it all depends on the project that you're doing. Alright, good enough. File, save. So now if we look at our texture, there's our just a black and white texture. Go back in the Maya. Alright, let's go back to our uh, file. And we could just go hit the button, or we can just go reload because it's the same name, it's the same file. So I'm just going to hit reload. Now you can see our texture sample appear updated. Now let's do another render. And it will give us a painted cinder block look. So there's the power of bump mapping. Play around with it, have fun, and as always, thanks for watching.